Embarrassing moments. It's only human to have a laundry list of those accumulated in a lifetime. However, when you happen to be a professional hockey player, well, it's not exactly easy to sweep them under the rug. In this video, we're going to go over several of the most embarrassing moments that have happened in 2023. But before we do, I'd like to quickly thank my amazing patrons, Dom M, Hayden D, Jonathan H, Patrick K, Francis B, and Thasha G. If you'd like to support me, plans start at just a dollar a month and feature perks such as unseen analytics, video previews, monthly shoutouts, and more. Simply click the link below to get started. And with that, here are the top six most embarrassing NHL moments of 2023. Let's face it, this season has been a rough one for the Senators and the team's fan base. The Shane Pinto situation, the DJ Smith debacle, and the eventual fall in the standings have been just a few reasons as to why Sens fans haven't been having a particularly good time here lately. Whenever you don't win, it's, it's frustrating. And it was around the season's infancy that the head coach's negligence was put on full display in the most embarrassing way possible. After having a pretty good first two periods of a game against Buffalo, goalie Anton Forsberg had managed to surrender five throughout the first 40 minutes. Therefore, it came as a shock to many that the netminder, who had only faced 18 shots in total, was starting in the final frame of play. Forsberg, who was readying his crease, was then awkwardly informed by teammate Travis Hamannick that he had been given the hook. I feel like, as a hockey fan, the NHL All-Star Game is usually a watch. Last year, for example, it appeared to be extremely cheesy, and when it came to the skills comp, the newer games didn't exactly work out. Along with the hardest shot and breakaway challenge, the fastest skater competition was another more traditional comp that was better than whatever this was supposed to be. Anyways, among the combatants for the title was former Norris winner, Kale McCarr. After completing his first round successfully and picking up speed, Makar lost an edge at around 10 seconds into his skate. The defenseman could be shown falling awkwardly, but thankfully fell into something softer than the boards. Once they realized he was okay, of course, Makar's teammates Nathan McKinnon and Miko Rantanen couldn't help but laugh at Makar's expense. It was great, yeah, I mean. I always love to fall in front of a bunch of people, so it's fun. I thought these guys got a good laugh I didn't want to say it, but he brought it no, up. No, you got it. You <laughs> could say that. I love it. Harry Price. You know, the only goalie in NHL history to ever win the Hart, Vesna, Jennings, and Lindsay all in the same year. Yeah, that guy. Since he's been sidelined now for a hot minute, it's widely known that Price's NHL career is long over. However, when it began, Price was the fifth selection out of a very stacked draft known as the Sidney Crosby sweepstakes. Therefore, it was only fitting that the Habs would have Carey Price announce Montreal's fifth overall selection. After being introduced by current GM Kent Hughes, Price then proceeded in French to reveal the pick's name. Unfortunately though for Price, all he could seem to utter was David. Hughes quickly bailed him out. We planned it that way, you said. David Reinbacher. Price later regretfully apologized by saying, boy, that was embarrassing. Sorry, David Reinbacher. So picture this. You decided to leave a city that is absolutely in love with hockey, to live more low-key and make more money. However, despite getting your wish, you're made to face your old team and fan base months later. And to top it all off, once you get the puck, you're booed by the same fans that formerly sang your praises. Now for Goudreau, that part may have been expected, and therefore he had time to prepare for it. But no one foresaw him getting a penalty shot awarded to him early in the first period. As boos rained down relentlessly, Goudreau began to skate towards Dan Vladar in net. Instead of getting a shot on goal though, Johnny Hockey failed to register one entirely as he ended up shooting wide. To add a little insult to injury, Nazem Kadri could be shown waving no goal from the bench area as well.
For those of you who weren't hockey fans yet in 2011, let's just say Brad Marchand isn't the most liked guy in BC. Due to the heated seven-game series that took place over a decade ago and the bitter rivalry that transpired in results, Marchand is and has been despised in Vancouver. Not only that, the Bruins captain has went out of his way on multiple occasions to troll the Canucks and the fan base. From pretending to lift the Stanley Cup to concussing Sammy Salo with a dirty hit, Marchand has given the Canucks fan base plenty of reasons to despise him. Therefore, when he happened to run into referee Wes McCauley, all fans could do was cheer in delight. Reason being, Marchand, who was trying to receive a pass from Patrice Bergeron, may have expected Macaulay to look behind him and see him coming. To Brad's dismay though, and Nux fans' delight, that didn't exactly happen. Now, looking back, it's hard not to wonder if Macaulay is in a household name in BC considering. When the current season commenced, the San Jose Sharks were expected to be a lottery team meaning that many assumed that they would be a bottom feeder in the West. And once the campaign kicked off, let's just say the Sharks exceeded expectations in the worst of ways. Following 11 straight losses, GM Mike Greer called out his team, which seemingly flipped a switch as the Sharks secured their first win against the Philadelphia Flyers. Interestingly enough, the next team they were set to face was also struggling, the Edmonton Oilers. However, knowing the talent on the Oils' side, the majority of fans going in believed that Edmonton would come out on top. Despite recording 41 shots on the contest, the Oilers weren't able to outscore San Jose entirely as the Sharks managed to squeak by with a trio of tallies versus Edmonton's deuce. Knowing that the Oilers were a Stanley Cup favorite coming into the season, this was extremely unprecedented. Let's just say for those who did bet against Connor McDavid and his team, they managed to make a pretty penny or two. In conclusion, since there is never a shortage of these sorts of moments, I'm sure that we're going to be coming back to the topic on a yearly basis. If you enjoyed this video and aren't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button. Again, if you'd like to support me and my work, you can do so by joining my Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.